When we were growing up, I mean, the ACC was the league. There was no Big East, and you watched the ACC, you saw the great teams. It was the best league in the country, and really by a lot, it wasn't that close. My first memory was of the 1957 North Carolina National Championship team, the team that went undefeated and beat Wilt Chamberlain and the University of Kansas in the finals. From that moment on, I was an ACC fan. I never thought coaching at Notre Dame, I'd be coaching in the ACC. And to come into what is the best basketball conference uh, in the country. To have the opportunity to compete against great coaches and great players, playing some of the venues that we get to play in is really special, and so it means a lot to have that opportunity. I grew up an ACC fan. It's always special for me to get an opportunity to coach in this league, coach the best players in the, in the country, coach against the best players in the country, and coach against the best coaches in the country history, the tradition that we have here, the passion that the players and the fans have had, uh, and the talent. Two, one, Walter takes the shot. It's unbelievable! Just day in and day out, you know, going against the best teams in the league and best teams in the, in the nation is just something, you know, something you look forward to when, you, when you're when you a young age, and, and that's just a great feeling. I feel like every time I step in, step in there in the arena, you know, you just gotta do what you can in order to win, you know, no matter what it takes. When you step on the floor, it's really about who's gonna give it their all, uh, who's gonna leave it on the floor, who's gonna, um, you know, who's gonna be mentally tougher, who's gonna be uh, more sound. I always get goosebumps before every single game. Could be against the best team or the worst team. I always get that feeling of. I gotta prove myself to people, whoever came to watch me play. To be a part of it, man, it's, it's really, honestly, it's, I gotta pinch myself that I'm actually in it. It's not necessarily something I ever thought that I would have the opportunity to be in something this incredible. To be the head coach at Georgia Tech, when you look at the men who've wore the uniforms and the men who've, who've guided them, um, it's, it, it's, you know, at times you're in awe. You look at this jersey, especially mine, you know, I, I see Ty Lawson had this jersey on, Ed Cota wore this jersey. You want to live up to that and, you know, improve upon that. It's just a big thing for me and it kind of motivates me. You know, just being an ACC player, you know, means that, you know, you're part of history. You know, you can always take that with you and you're a part of a brotherhood. The conference has always been considered the greatest and that becomes amazing uh, if, if that's higher than greatest, you know. We want to be amongst the best, and we've done that in the ACC now, both academically and athletically and basketball specifically, because there's no question, it's clearly established itself as the best basketball conference. Well, we talk with our team about it being one of the greatest shows on earth and being one of the uh, most celebrated and fun things in your life as an athlete. I'm not sure there's a lot of things that you're going to experience that'll be that special. Wow, what, what, a, what a rush for a player to be able to go on the court and play in that type of an environment. And then to uh, never had that as a player, but as a coach, I've had it uh, 33 times. And, and uh, it's, it's pretty good each time you have that rush. From the Greensboro Coliseum, off we go with our coverage of the 61st ACC Men's Basketball Tournament in a week that will see history made with an expanded field of 15 teams this year with the additions of Syracuse, Pittsburgh, and Notre Dame. We start on Wednesday for the first time ever, and I guess it's only fitting that one of the new teams, Notre Dame, will be up first as the Irish go against one of the originals, Wake Forest, as the two kick it off here in game number one. How you doing today, Coach? Good, man. Good, buddy. Here we go. We're honored to be part of this tournament, man. It's a historic day for Notre Dame to take part in the tradition of the ACC tournament. Let's give 100% to 
today. We've given 95, we've given 90. Let's give 100. I, I swear we can get a lot of wins in this tournament. We give 100. That's Let's for the town, Women's Squad. Squad. Let's eat, Squad. Squad. We're no forks in the knives now, Squad. New teams and new traditions were on display at the Greensboro Coliseum to kick off the tournament. Wake Forest was on their game right from the start. Thomas wheels into the lane and his pass is deflected, but right into the hands of Jones, who drives, lays it up and in. Very, very important to start off aggressively. That's all we talked about. Be aggressive, attack, be aggressive. In for the layup, got the finish, Mark. Got a foul on Notre Dame. Emotion is so important because, you know, it, it, some players feed off that. They need that emotion, they need that energy so to get them going. You know, Karan was just on fire tonight. You know, he, he came out in the zone and he knocked down a couple threes and that got his momentum going as well. So emotion is great for a lot of players. Into the right corner, Williams, three, give it to him. He's got 11. And we go to halftime with Wake Forest on top, 37 to 29. Let's go, Ivan! Let's flush the first half. Let's get off to a good start in the second half, which we did. You get that thing to two possessions. That's when you need two stops in a row, and we could never get it. Wake, though, into the cutter. Thomas tries to Oh! Is crammed into by one of the Irish, and Thomas coaxed it over the rim anyway. And Wake Forest wins over Notre Dame by the final score of 81 to 69. Oh, man, I'm, I'm, I'm high on life right now. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm super ecstatic. It's, it's just great, you know, but my focus right now is big. Feel good about yourself. What a heck of a win, guys. Heck of a win. Deep on three, one, two, three, deep. And also on day one, Miami was ready to defend their title. The only feeling is a good feeling that we've played well here in the Greensboro Coliseum uh, last season. And we also played well in the state of North Carolina the last couple of years. So we have fond memories and uh, hopefully we'll play well uh, today. To keep the streak alive, the Hurricanes would have to get past the Hokies of Virginia Tech. You are ready to play. You've had a wonderful year. You've overcome every bit of adversity you have faced all year long. Do it again today. Let's go. We're in Greensboro, and we're underway. Miami will get it started as Jakiri wins the tap. Here's a three by Eddie on the left wing, and it's good. And I thought our guys really came out confident, really came out ready to play. We jumped on them and got a nice, nice, nice lead. We were shooting the basketball very well. I thought we came out with a lot of confidence. And Malibu, a bounce pass low. Caught by Reigns, turns to shoot. The jump hook is good over Swope. Lacan steers it to the middle of the floor to read with the shot kick. Right back to Lacan, ball is poked away by Wilson. And last touch by Manu Lacan, says Mike Eads. Devon Reed hitting those threes, I mean, it was crucial. We were having some trouble early in the game making our shots. With him hitting those big threes, you know, in the first half, it got us going, fired us up, made me want to get to the basket. Back to Reed, swings the left to Adams on the wing. Down low to Swope, ball to the second. Oh! A right-handed Tomahawk jam! Zero turnovers for the Hokies, and they lead at the break, 32-31. It was a close game throughout. Virginia Tech found themselves in it until the very end with a chance to dethrone the champs. Fires and scores a left wing three, and Tech leads with 316 to go. Miami 55, Virginia Tech 53, 5.7 seconds remaining. Wilson takes a deep breath, puts the ball behind his head, Puts it up. Now it's no good. Oh no! Eddie with the rebound. Great back up and shot his block. The rebound is slow for Miami. Just like we anticipated, he missed it. Jarrell Eddie did a great job of getting the rebound, but Eric Swope did a great job of blocking the shot, securing the rebound, and securing the victory. And the University of Miami wins. They will advance to Thursday night second round. The Hurricanes survive in advance. You never stop playing. I don't get five seconds, two seconds, one second. You've got to keep playing the game of basketball all the way through. How about Davon? Yeah. Hey! Yeah. Nailing yeah. those three. In the final opening day matchup, it was Boston College. Let's go now, Dave. And Georgia Tech. Let's go, y'all. Let's go, man. I can't 
talked a little bit about today, about our resolve this year. I've been extremely proud of how we fought every game. Now it's all even. Everybody here is the same. It doesn't matter. We're going to play winning basketball the rest of the way, starting tonight. All right, let's go. For Boston, for Boston, we sing our proud refrain. Go Eagles! Trey Gold between the legs dribble. Gets trapped by Anderson and Rayon. Golden, no post. Now Holsey, pull up, good. Cam Holsey, nice touch from the right wing. Georgia Tech would build an early lead and keep it well into the second half. We talked to our guys before the game and I thought they executed extremely well. Just a simple fact that we needed to play harder than Boston College. And that's no offense to Boston College because they play hard, but this game had to mean a little bit more to us. Boston College never quit. I thought we did a terrific job of fighting back and having great resolve, and I thought that was you know, why we got back in the game and then eventually took the lead as well. Ball tapped out. Rayhan gets it. He's going one-on-one. -on -one. Finds Heckman cutting to the rim. Heckman lays it in, and all of a sudden, the Eagles are only down six. Bounce. Owens down the lane. Layup. Good. And the foul. Garland Owens will go to the line. How about Boston College cutting it to four? Here comes Golden. Golden approaches the 10 second line in the front court. Driving the lane, ran into Owens, tied up, and we got overtime. Bonus ball at the Greensboro Coliseum. Georgia Tech won the game in overtime, and Trey Golden came up big. Off the glass, yes, and a foul. I just drove it hard, and you know, I got the bump, and I finished it, so kind of made up for the end of regulation when I kind of fumbled the ball, so I was just happy I made a shot. Georgia Tech 73, Boston College 70 in overtime. The Jackets move on and they will be a part of the Thursday night game against Clemson. Congratulations to the seniors. Have never won an ACC tournament game playing, hey, right? All right? Hey, hey, we've done a lot of stuff we haven't done in the past. Three straight wins over Georgia, wins on the road against ranked teams. How about let's advance in another round, huh? Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go. Family on three. One, two, three, family. Good night. See you tomorrow. Choose for your cards in today's newspaper for day two of the tournament. Just one dollar. Three teams have departed. Four more will leave today as the second round of the 61st annual ACC Championship Tournament gets underway in Greensboro. Florida State plays Maryland. A 12th high noon tip-off. The winner stays here. The loser goes home. Morris goes it up. Morris goes up on the shot. It's no good. Got the miss. Goes up again. He lays it in. 17 10. Bojo got six. Off it goes to Allen. Allen will put on the Jets. Go coast to coast. Layup is good with the left hand. And now Maryland leads it 23 to 20. Knocked away by Air Thomas. Down the sideline. One on one. Air Thomas. Slam. Duck City. 37 36. Maryland and Florida State were dead even for 40 minutes, both desperate to stay in Greensboro. Rebounded by Faust. Faust has got Lehman in his left side. Faust past the Jack, takes it, and he ties the game with a minute 46 to go at 63. Both teams were battle weary, but still even with just seconds left. The game was tied at 65. Florida State had the ball. Coach Ben called a timeout, and I was looking at him like, man, when are you going to use a timeout? You know, when are you going to tell uh, Miller to take the ball to the side and use it one of your timeouts? But, you know, he didn't. We felt very comfortable that if we just execute what we was going to call timeout to tell him, and we had been doing all the second half, it was the best approach. Just a high ball screen, and, you know, it happened to come to me, and I happened to drop the pass off the boards for the dunk. Six seconds to go. Out front, Mitchell comes out. Miller passes the ball. O'Connor one. Bounce. Into the L. Slam dunk. Bojo with four tenths of a second to go. Owls win. Bojo's got a double double. His first career and a great assist from O'Connor White. How about them Seminoles beating Maryland, sending the Terps to the Big Ten with a loss? And Bojo, the hero of the hour. Ian passed it to O'Connor. He got double team and he gave me a great pass. I was wide open, so I just finished the play. <laughs> It felt great. It was a first, my first buzzer beater. You know, it was a winning dunk, so it felt great. 
I hate that they're going to leave. I absolutely, you know, I've been following Maryland basketball since Lefty Giselle. I think the ACC is going to miss Maryland, and Maryland's going to miss the ACC. With the Greensboro Coliseum still buzzing about the Seminoles' buzzer beater, what? 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 Wake Forest took the court with confidence after a win on day one. Pittsburgh was about to experience the ACC tournament for the first time. I felt good about our guys. We had three good days of practice, and uh, we knew who we were playing, Wake Forest and Notre Dame, and you know we're healthy now. And we were practicing with all of our guys, and I think we're in a different state than maybe a lot of teams at this point. Let's get him out of here, y'all. Here's Wake on the left side. Karan Williams drills a three. Wake's Karan Williams kept the Deacons in the game. Left side round three now to Williams up uh, top of the key in for the drive now, and he takes it all the way to the basket for a layup. Looks like a running back protecting the ball through the white shirt. Pitt began to pull away. Panthers fast break. Michael Young layup shot score from Patterson. Drives it all the way, misses. Battle jam by Derek Randall. As the clock wound down, the Panthers certainly proved worthy of a matchup with the Tar Heels on Friday. We just played Wake Forest in, in North Carolina, and then we'll play North Carolina in North Carolina. I mean, it's, you know, there's a reason why they want the event here, and, <laughs> you know, it's great to be a part of it. And there's, there's no question it's uh, the, the history of the tradition uh, of this event is uh, second to none. Timing is so important to this entire tournament. I mean, first with the league, every team has to come at a certain time. Practices are set where they practice at a certain time. Games, half times, everything is on a television type of stratosphere. Every minute, every hour is critical. You look at the timing, if you don't notice it at home, and it's just a smooth transition into that commercial break, then we've done our job. But rhythm and timing, it's like dancing. It has to be right there and it's symmetrical. Shot clock at nine. Pass inside, Harris throws it away. It's a great honor uh, to be back, you know, to be honored by the ACC as a legend, even though, you know, I'm only uh, 29 years old. I'm watching the games and I feel like, you know, I'm out there, you know. I get nervous, I get anxious, you know, I get angry, um, I have joy, happiness. So uh, it's really good to be on this side of it. NC State is a fast break basketball team. Run, TJ, run, Tyler, run, Des, get out. I want to see you guys get out and run, run, run. We've got to get back and make them face our set defense. Great effort, going to do it with our defense. Our guys have to rebound. Rebound the ball, you got to win that battle. All of you got to get involved, rebound the ball. And we got to do it the entire game, no matter how long it takes. I wanted this game, I wanted Miami. You guys wanted Miami. You keep working defensively, and offensively. There's a sure. game tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, fellas. We need to be playing. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Here we go. Work, work, work. Let's go. State on three. One, two, three. State. Together on three. One, two, three. Go. State's TJ Warren was the ACC Player of the Year. He was ready. Here's a handoff, right side, broken up by Warney Steele. Head man pass to Barber. Barber down the floor, leaves it off for Freeman Jams. And what a play by T.J. Warren, getting on the floor, making that steal. Barber looking for Hani, he's covered up. Now to the foul line to Warren. Once dribble, leads in, fires, hits. Could Miami be a team of destiny two years in a row? The Canes were playing like it. Reed behind the screen, fires, and scores! Davon Reed. Right behind the free throw line. It's 51 50. The dribbles into the paint. Warren puts up a tough shot. It's an air ball. It's loose and emerging with it is Adams. Adams, middle of the floor. Trailing in his wake is Reed for three in the lead. Good! Davon Reed gives Miami a two point lead. 53 51. For Turner, rising for three. Good! Rolston Turner with 141 to go. They have just signed the death warrants. 58-53. Our players know that TJ's going to score, they, and we need him to score. But they also know, and he knows, 
he needs some help. And it needs to be somebody else step up and make some big shots here and there. And tonight, I thought it was Rawlson. They did a great job of running Rawlson off a lot of screens. They made it difficult for us to, to chase him. And, um, but you got to give him all the credit. He came off and knocked down big shots. I mean, if he doesn't hit those, it's a totally different game. And State has won its ACC opener for the third straight year. Now is your opportunity. Now is your opportunity. Get yourselves ready to play, get some rest tonight, and come on in here tomorrow. It's going to be our night. It's going to be our night. Good job. Everybody up. Come on. Let's go. 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 Let's go.
You know, that's a little, uh, little high-class tailgating, but right here, this is down and dirty tailgating. This is what we do. I'm Jim, and I'm, I'm from Virginia, and this is the way we all tailgate. We just have a great time. Go What's in that, that pot? Yeah. I haven't missed but one uh, tournament since 64. We're having some beer, and then we had homemade sausage, and, and then you got bacon and all that kind of stuff that you have. You make your sandwiches. So everybody has a different idea of what to bring and, and different, so it just makes a very special uh, event. It's fun because I didn't even know these guys 30 minutes before and now now we're good friends because we played a fun game of uh, cornhole. It's real fun. ACC tournament, we haven't missed one in 14 years. We travel wherever it goes. We got friends that go Other back friends. years that we've been coming with. Meeting new friends and watching good basketball. Virginia's getting ready to play finally. We've been here a couple days and <laughs> waiting to see Virginia play. So far all the favorites have won except for one but uh, I look for some upsets today, just not in the first game. Day three, historic program. Day three. It is halfway to the finish line, but for the Virginia Cavaliers, the top seed, the ACC tournament starts today. How you feeling, Joe? Feeling good, how are you guys doing? Doing good, you ready? Yes, sir. The Cavaliers, a one seed for the first time since 1981, and also trying to advance to the Saturday semifinal for the first time since 1995 is the Cavaliers tangled with the Seminoles of Florida State. Uh, the team that plays the day before, they, they have maybe a little bit of an advantage early because they are lathered up. They, there's not the nerves, there's not the tightness. Steal by Aaron Thomas, drives, lays it up with a little hand. We score! Aaron Thomas and Tulsa for one turnover. He gets a layup and we lead 11 10. A steal by Aaron Thomas. Fast break. Thomas will go up and slams it through. 14 13 Thomas. The disadvantage of not playing the day before became a little bit of an advantage as the game wore on because of energy, fatigue, where we hadn't played. Okay, now we're into the game and, and we hadn't used, obviously, the gas in the tank that um, Florida State did playing the day before. Here's Justin Anderson attacking down low in traffic. Puts the shot up. No good, but there's Gill as he punishes the rim again with a two-hand jam. Well, I thought we had a, a great game plan, and I thought we played with a tremendous amount of energy, but I think it was quite obvious that we kind of ran out of gas there a little bit. Now to Harris. He fires from three, and he knocks it down from the near wing left. It's back to a 15-point lead with 8.50 to go. Brogdon can't shoot triple. Well, the first up by Gary and Atkins. Just keep on watching, Knowles, and that'll happen every time. 57-42. The long-awaited final horn sounds, and Virginia fans, you can breathe the sigh of relief. For the first time since 95, the Hoops will play on Saturday here at the ACC Tournament. Our final score, Virginia 64, Florida State 51. In the second quarterfinal game, the North Carolina Tar Heels would make their first appearance. The opponent, the Pitt Panthers, coming off that 30-point win over Wake Forest. Even before we got onto the court, we wanted to bring as much energy as we could. Obviously, we knew it was going to be somewhat of a home game for them. As a team, uh, we, we played really well on the road this year, so we kind of rode that towards the beginning of the game. Mike Patterson left wing. Takes a quick check of the clock. He'll fire up a long three. Short. Rebound. McDonald tipped it, but right to Zana, who dumped it in. 16-8 so far. Keeping our fingers crossed. We're definitely outnumbered by the UNC fans, but we're, we're mighty. We're small but mighty. To right. Whips it on the left. Three-pointer on the way. And good by James Robinson. It's 23-8. Come on, guys. Pitt led by 10 at the half. An early second half run put them up by 19. Robinson, left corner. 12 footer in the air by Cameron yeah. Wright. Makes it 50 to 31. Panthers by 19. Gotta hit some shots and play some defense. Not yeah. happening so far? <laughs> Not happening all day. And they need to pray. Yeah. Right now they need to pray. An they they need a lot of prayer. Tar Heel coach Roy Williams believed his team would come back. I'm always a guy that thinks we're going to come back from anything. I've 
never been behind enough in the game that I didn't think we were going to win. Outside for James Michael McAdoo. Now Britt off the page. A moving three is in the air, and he drains it. And it's 61-49. You know, down the stretch of the game, it was kind of like Marcus was just trying to make every play he could. And uh, he had some really tough shots. I think Cameron did a really good job defending them. So, uh, you know, even though he had some tough shots, I think they were all well contested. Despite a great effort that cut the lead to three, Pitt hung on to win. North Carolina in their home state. We love the ACC and we will see you tomorrow. Hi, my name is Penny Aguero and I own Viva La Cupcakes. We're getting a lot of fun reactions, a lot of excitement. <laughs> my favorite is the raspberry lemon. A lot. Red velvet, chocolate, 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 strawberry, chocolate turtle, white coconut, and Oreo. Um, they are great. We started researching how to make it the best tasting logo cupcake ever. And they're so good, they made my horns light up. If I took all my logo cupcakes and mixed them together, I would end up having an ACC tournament. This historic Syracuse basketball season reaches another new venue. For the 61st time, the ACC tournament is held, and for the 25th time, it's in Greensboro. It's the first time ever where Syracuse is involved. Came over to cut them down. Syracuse just happens to be the next team we got to play. We came here to be playing on Sunday. We came here to play on Sunday. Yeah, on Sunday. Syracuse, new to the ACC, showed State why they were ranked number one in the country much of the season. They're up ahead, Ennis along the sideline, Fair rises and punishes the rim of the lefty jam. That was one of those games where they're awfully good. But we have confidence that we're pretty good too, and so it ended up being a good battle. You know, I think probably the one thing with me I'm the most proud of about our team is that they find a way to keep uh, fighting back. Four to shoot. Lewis drives to the top, pump fakes into the uh, nice. lane to Warren underneath the Vandenberg, jams it. Beautiful touch pass to Vandenberg for the slam. And State takes the lead 22 to 21. This was a great battle between two solid teams. We always fight. Um, we never give up on anything. Um, even when it seemed like the game is out of our hands, we, we, we somehow make it a close game. Stayed up 50 to 40. Grant accelerates, jumps up right to the bucket, lays it in, made it look easy, and a foul. So a chance at a three-point play here for Jeremy Grant. They had the game pretty much under control. We made a couple really good steals in our traps and got down and uh, gave ourselves an opportunity to win the game. Grant lob inside for Christmas. He jams it over Vandenberg. What a beautiful pass. 55-54. The Cuse pulls to within one. State's got a tenuous one-point lead. 5-11 left. Hit ahead for Benizet. Left side. Benizet to the bucket. Lays it in with the right hand. Timeout coach Beheim with 26 seconds left. So that was a very quick turnaround as the Orange got a stop and a bucket. State again in front by three. 66-63. 64.6 left. Here's Ennis into the front court. Ennis is going to drive it all the way to the basket. Throws it up off the glass. Jam is oh. missed. Inside by Grant. Out, ball pops out to Ennis for a long three. Right wing, no good. Brought down by Christmas. Cooney, tough three from the corner. Hits the top of the backboard. Down to Grant off its board. Fear for three in the tie with 10 seconds left. Halfway down. Rebound Ennis. Six seconds left. Ennis to Cooney. Forces up a three left wing. No good. Staved in bounds by Fair. No, he didn't. He he hit the baseline, trying to save it in. It was interesting on the last possession, you know, they kept getting the rebound. But every time it left their hand, none of them looked good to me. And I was okay. It's like, okay, that one's okay. Let's get a rebound, you know, and then like, okay, the next one. And then it, they shot. It was like, okay, that one's okay. It's probably not going in. And, uh, you know, we just survived. NC State's got it, and the Orange in their first trip here to Greensboro are on the short end of a three point game. State beats Syracuse. The Pack's going to the ACC Tournament semifinals for the third straight year under head coach Mark Gottfried. Final score from the Greensboro Coliseum, State 66, Syracuse 63. <laughs> The 
The Duke Blue Devils have won more ACC tournament titles than anyone else. Their opponent in the last quarterfinal game of the day was Clemson. For the Tigers, a possible berth in the NCAA tournament was at stake. They're a very physical, talented, and athletic team, and we knew we had to be uh, pretty much perfect uh, to win this game. Right side, Cook. Lobs, stuff, Hood. Man, that's perfection right there. Paul backs out toward the midcourt logo, eight on the shot clock. Now he's going to break down Cook, drives right in the lane, goes inside, and he banks it home. And the horn sounds Duke. Well, head to the locker room with a four-point lead over Clemson at 29 to 25. Duke came out and after halftime and played well again and uh, put us on our heels, but our guys dug in and fought. Now on the right side, puts it on the floor, into the paint, looks up, turns to the left hand, got it. Harrison just couldn't stop. And it's now a 42 to 29 Duke lead of 13 points. The personality and the heart of Clemson's team probably rose to its highest during that time because they're fighting for their lives. With four on the shot clock, Tyler crossover dribble goes behind the back, left to the basket, doubles one up off the iron, no, and a putback jam by Landry Noko. The lobs in the lane for Noko, spins to his left, and a righty hook is up and in. 50 to 44, Clemson's back within six. It was a 13 point lead with 12 11 to go. We usually find a couple 10 12 possessions during stretches in games where we we string those together, and when we do, that's when we make our runs. Ball tipped back outside, picked off by the Tigers. Harrison goes behind the back of the dribble to keep it from being stolen. Out on the right side, Hall fires a three and makes a three. Rod Hall knocking it down from the right wing, and it's 56-53, Duke, with 3.40 to go. Down by one. Clemson had 3.8 seconds left. Time for one last play. All right, front guarding is Jefferson. They can run the baseline. They get it in. Hall comes front court. He's going to race all the way down. Has it stripped away. Blue Devils recover. Blue Devils win it by a 63 to 62 score. And the Blue Devils will advance to the semifinals with a heart stopping 63 to 62 victory. That's what you play the game for. It probably wasn't as pretty as it should have been, but hey, we live to fight another day. <laughs> Timing is everything because it's a mosaic you're trying to create and it's all down to a T. Something's going to happen that's not going to fold in the way the way you've planned it. And you know what happens then? People take over. And if you've got good people, it's going to work out fine. It's coming to the court. My job is to make sure that teams are getting on and off the court. Uh, coaches are getting on and off the court without being stopped. Uh, make sure we're staying on time, as well as uh, getting our acts all the time that they need it half. Make sure nobody, if we're, we can get through here, you hold everybody here. Just to get them through, it'll take two seconds. We work off of the seconds, literally. Each, uh, each promo, everything is off the of seconds, so we go through that minute by minute, second by second to make sure it's clear. Woo! Go Pitt! Good afternoon, everybody. It is semifinal Saturday here from Greensboro, North Carolina. Today it is down to four, and Virginia looks to take the next step. The top seeded Cavaliers playing on Saturday for the first time in 19 years. They'll try to make their first final in 20 years today as they take on the newcomer to the ACC, the Pitt Panthers. Pitt has power inside, and Talib Zana was big early. They double him and gets it off to Zana. Spins to the basket, up and in. Nice move to leave Zana to make it 21-18 Panthers. One thing about Zana, he's so continuous. I mean, you think you have him, and all of a sudden he's spinning off, you get an offensive rebound, or 
When he doesn't get the rebound on the defensive end, he's shot out of a can and running down the floor. With the middle clog, Virginia took their offense outside the paint. Both defenses were really clogging the lane and it was jammed. So the ability to, to knock one down, just to loosen it a little bit, <laughs> get three instead of two, was big. Virginia's down by one, Joe, three! Three ball in the air by Harris, it's off the rim and goes in. Oh. It hit the rim and fell in and it's 26-24 Virginia. We got the shooters bounce. In the second half, Virginia found a way to score inside. Pitt was finding its range from outside. Into the corner. Patterson for three. There's a three ball that's good. And the Panthers trail 33 to 32. In games like this, you're just looking for any of those X-factor plays. We had some big blocks. Our defense got broken down, but we made some plays at the rim that we had to. Now it's still loose, but it's going to be run down by right. He goes the other way, feeds it up, shot blocked by Mitchell. Newkirk, Newkirk, inside, rejected by Gill. A Panthers steal and bucket got pit to within one, 49 to 48. It'll come down, steal by James Robinson. And then they, they knock the ball away from him. He picks it up, drives, plays, scores. Yes. Wow, what a play by Robinson. Woo! Pitt Bench wanted a foul, didn't get it. With time running out, Anthony Gill hit two pressure-packed free throws to give Virginia the advantage. Pitt still had a chance. Next foul sends him to the line. Here's a three-pointer. Robinson blocked by Anderson. It's over as Justin Anderson blocks the shot from James Robinson. And the Virginia faithful is on its feet going nuts. Virginia's going to the ACC Tournament Championship game for the first time in 20 years as the Hoos hold on 51 to 48 here from Greensboro. 1976 and only one ACC Tournament Championship at Virginia. So to be able to try to join that group would be special. I know they talk about it. This is such a prestigious tournament. And here we are, and, and you know, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to step up and take it. You're not just gonna get it given to you, whoever NC State or Duke. We're always trying to add new elements to the tournament. Uh, you got halftime entertainment, which was new in the last two or three years. We haven't done that before. Halftime show's been great, lots of entertainment. We really enjoyed the rim rockers. Acrobats flipping each other. They're somersaults, they're twists. One time they must have done 10 or 15 in a row. They were fantastic. The halftime shows this week's been super. I mean, it keeps you in your seat. You don't want to leave, you want to see what's up next. Every halftime show has been phenomenal. ACC. Semi-final Saturday. That's right, and it's all about the Duke Blue Devils. Whoa, Pat Rose. Jabari Parker, player of the year, should have been. TJ is. No way. Jabari, it's his birthday today. Go Duke. TJ, 43 points. Gonna put it on you. No way. Go the Duke. man child. Go Duke. Go Duke. Go State. Good luck, coach. Great job. Two old tobacco road rivals. State. In Duke. As he had been all season long, T.J. Warren was the key for the Wolfpack. Warren's a great player. And he's not a good player, he's a great player. And he's had one of the special years that a player has had in our conference. Here's Turner, long pass up the floor to Warren, cruises in for the right side, the runner's up, banks it in. Oh, what a fabulous move by T.J. Warren. State would have trouble stopping Duke's great freshman Jabari Parker in the paint. Baseline shot fake, puts it on the floor in the lane and puts up the jumper high off the glass. And we're tied again at 22. Maybe sometimes it'll be open on the low post, but I think that opens up for guys on the perimeter. Kicks to the corner, Quinn Cook three and he drains it. He's got eight, we're tied at 34. We go to halftime here in Greensboro, semifinal number two. Duke leads at 39-38 over NC State. Playing real hard. State is a remarkable team, but I think Duke can beat them if we play real hard defense. 
Warren with a high alley. He's knocked away by Jefferson. Got it outside by Parker. He'll take it down. One-handed jab. You could see that one coming when he crossed midcourt. Well, I knew that I had to come through for my team, especially Emil coming in with a with a really good deflection on defense that had gave me momentum to at least push or um, establish a fast break. So. Um, that just just helped me, and I seen the two on one, so I knew I had to finish strong because if I didn't, then I was going to be a miss. When we're tired, or when we come through a, a, a low period, and he makes a play like that, uh, it helps our adrenaline boost kick back in. Duke was defending state star T.J. Warren as well as anyone had all season. I mean, you can't um, really contain a player like that, but as far as team wise, we did a great job in the second half of, of shrinking the floor, and making them see multiple people. Duke's defense was great. It would earn them a spot in the championship game. One bounce to Harrison, out to Cook, three ball, got it! Being in this tournament, winning this tournament, uh, going deep in this tournament, something that Duke has done year after year after year. So to be a part of it, it is great. And you know, I'm really happy. I haven't won a championship, and so our guys are hungry and excited to do it. It's an honor, you know, let alone you know, coaching you know, multiple games. And if you have the chance to win a championship in this league, it's it's the best. I'll see you on Championship Sunday. And 12, 11, 10, 9, 10 I'm Billy McCoy, director for Raycom. Uh, done this tournament 41 years. Basically, it's been one of the greatest sporting events in my career. And timing is everything in this event because of the game itself. The pacing of the game is important uh, for us in the truck covering the game. We have to let the game come to us. My job is to get that guy that's watching that game involved. If I can get him up out of his chair and into that game, we've done our job. 30 seconds. This is a big event. It's, it's more than just a basketball tournament. It is an event. It's a happening. It's 10, 10, 9, 8, 7, 10, 6, 10. 5, 4, 3, 2, one and black. Woo, nice job, job guys. It's championship Sunday at the ACC tournament. Go do! Go who's! We're gonna win. We're gonna win. We're gonna win. No, we're gonna win. UVA, UVA, go who's! It's our turn. Had a lot of great uh, games here in Greensboro, but of course the one we remember the most is that up in Landover. The year, the first time ever that the uh, tournament left the state of North Carolina when we were able to win and those, those three games were truly exciting. It's about time we got here. And at the end of the day, you know, the last time we played a championship game was 1994 and I wasn't able to play in that game. I had a broken ankle, so I had to sit and watch. But the way that I felt then, I feel right now because of course it's almost like, you know, I'm, I'm rooting my guys on and I want the best for them. And, you know, I'm confident that it's going to work out well. You know, I got a perfect opportunity. Alright, take advantage. Have some fun. Got it. Stand up. Go out the right way, fellas. It's time for Virginia to step forward and win another championship. And I certainly believe that what Tony Bennett's done this year and his staff and the players, uh, the, the way they play the game, they've really got a chance to go a long way. You gotta have a little luck and you gotta remember that. It's not easy. But uh, they're ready for the battle and it should be a great, great game today in the championship. Good afternoon and welcome to Championship Sunday here in the ACC, where once there were 15 teams, now there are two, is only top seeded Virginia. 20 years, 14 games, and now we're back. Let's go guys, go Hoos! Is in the field against third seeded Duke. Go the game. I think Duke's got the experience here at the ACC tournament. They've been in the big game here in Greensboro many, many times. It's a matchup of two very different teams today. Let's go, baby, let's go. We've been here, we deserve to be here, so we're going to try to take it on them today. Maybe we'll be changing shirts by the time we leave. We'll just arm wrestle and we'll see who wins. <laughs> the Blue Devils will be gunning for their 20th all-time ACC tournament title. Let's go, Duke! And their 11th in the last 17 years, while the Cavaliers will be looking for only their second all-time ACC tournament crown and first in 38 years. It's been a long time coming, and we're definitely ready. Whoa, 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 go, go. Let's go! Virginia was regular season champion and the tournament favorite. 
Duke had more titles than anyone else. It had the makings of a great championship. Virginia played as they had all season, hard-nosed and scrappy. Cavs with a seven-point lead at 9-2. to two. They have come out smoking. And as always, Cavaliers play great defense. Akil stays with a beautifully and blocks the shot. Parker's in the crowd, and he is swallowed up. Gill and Atkins to block that ball away. They have to know this is going to be a, it's going to be hard for me to get easy looks today. Everything I get is going to be contested. We're going to shut down the lane, and I'm going to have to make contested outside shots. We felt driving the ball and trying to get to the foul line was the way to go. And then if you drove and kicked, then you would get a better, you know, better three-point shot. Hood sends it out top of the Arctic coach, swings it off to Dawkins. Long three is up and good. Blue Devils trying to crack the offensive side again. But here's another three from the top by Hood for the Blue Devils. Virginia leading 28 to 25, a half befitting of this ACC championship forum. They're not gonna give it to us, man. Fine. They're not gonna give it to us. We gotta take it. We gotta take it. They, they're like a shark in the water. When they smell blood, they take advantage of every weakness. And, and you know, when you play them, you gotta really uh, finish out the possession. Duke's Jabari Parker is a playmaker, and when he starts making plays, watch out. Parker steals, he goes around Harris, up the straight, down the middle, and slips it with one hand. Oh, you can man. see it in his eyes. That is a one-man wrecking crew, and that has ignited the house. Midway through the second half, Parker took over and gave Duke the lead. Hands it away. For Jefferson, out to Parker, long three, bottom! Jabari Parker hits his second three of the game, and that puts Duke back on top at 45-44. Virginia is a veteran team. They don't let close games get to them. They're just a good team, and we have a good team. Our kids fought like crazy. It's their third game in 40 hours, and, um, we, we didn't, you know, we had a hard time finishing. Over to Parker, making something happen. Into the paint, has it stripped away and picked up by the Cavaliers, Akil Mitchell. Virginia with a four point lead. Harrison open three, and he hits it from the near wing left. The Cavaliers have surged to a seven point lead. Been a long time coming. History today, for the first time in 38 years, the Cavaliers are ACC Tournament Champions in 2014. ACC Champions! ACC Champions! Our final score, 72 to 63, is confetti. Pours on to the Greensboro Coliseum. Virginia won for the ages. It's a huge moment. This is what we've all dreamed of. Man. It's a, it's a beautiful moment. We have guys that bought in. We got guys that just genuinely love each other. And when you got a team like that, nothing but great things can happen. They embody to me what a true team is. We have these pillars in our program, five of them. And and two of them are, well one's unity, but the other one's servanthood. And we talk about the way to greatness is through being a servant. And they literally are, will, will, they give of themselves. They're, they don't care who scores, they just care that we score. They don't care um, who's getting the attention, they just want to win, they want to try to do it the right way. And that's fun to coach. 15 teams, 14 games, five days, one champion. The ACC men's basketball tournament is about more than just basketball. It's about tradition, honor excellence. For Virginia, they were anything but cavalier in their quest to cut down the nets, raising the trophy, and celebrating a championship. Wahoo style.